Let's talk about global variables in Blender. Uh, this is a way that you can change the values of a input or of a variable or of a value on a bunch of different materials at the same time in Blender. For example, if you look here, um, these three cubes, um, you can see in the shader editor, they all have different emissions of colors and yet they're all fading at the same time and at the same rate, um, even though the only thing you can see here is an emission and a group node. I'm going to go into the group node um, and just dissect how this global variable thing works in Blender, because it's a super powerful tool. Um, this is a very simple illustration, but imagine if you had a entire object that you wanted to fade to be transparent, um, and it was made of a bunch of different materials, and you wanted them to all fade at the same time and essentially start fading and end fading at the same moment in time. Um, this is a pretty common task for product videos and other renders like that, and so it's important to know how to do. And it's a lot easier to do this way uh, using global variables than trying to match up the timing manually and trying to get it right that way. And so let's, let's just jump into this. Let me first um, apologize if there's any background noise. We're currently crate training a seven week old puppy. And so he is pretty good most of the time, but sometimes he uh, just has a tendency to make his presence known in some various ways, but yeah, just apologies for that if that's the case. All right, so I've deleted the two cubes and left just one cube um, so that we can focus on the setup of this before diving in. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete the nodes here so that we can start from scratch. Um, and so the first thing you need in any node setup is a material output. Um, and obviously the material output just takes whatever is set into the surface node and displays that. So if we set it to RGB, for example, it will be um, just an RGB color. Whereas if we set it to diffuse, we don't have any lights in here. So let me add sun. then it gives you that diffuse uh, look. This is a very bad lighting setup. I highly recommend not just throwing lights in your scene like this, but for demonstration purposes, um, it works well enough. Um, in the material output, you will have a mix shader. And this um, is, as you know, how you can control the combination of two different shaders, colors, or inputs I mean, in various ways. And so, there we go. If I switch back to rendered here, you can see that one is fully red because this is the second input. Uh, zero is fully blue because this is the first input. And 0.5 um, is a pretty nice gray color. Um, the reason for this is because as you look at the color wheel here, you can see that this red and this blue are directly opposite each other. And so if you go from this point to this point halfway, you'll meet right about in the middle. Um, with any two colors on the RGB wheel that are opposite, you'll always have gray um, if you meet in the middle. So for example, if I go like this, You can see um, it's back to a gray color because they're opposite from each other. Um, and then again, if they're not opposite from each other, if they're just bordering or neighboring, um, as you can see here, they're part of a 90 degree quadrant, uh, then the midtone will be a mix of those two colors. Um, now, as far as the actual global variable goes, um, I'm going to keep it fairly simple for now. You can use this to influence pretty much anything, but I'm just going to use it as the mix factor between two RGB colors. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to have the second mix color always be white. Um, and so essentially what we're going to be doing here is having a bunch of objects of various colors that all fade to white with the same timing. Um, and so we're obviously going to need a second object. So I'm just going to duplicate this cube with Shift D. 
you can see it pulls the nodes over when you use Shift D in that way. I'm just going to make a copy of that. And I'm going to go in here and change this green, um, actually, you know, that way to a blue, like that. And now, if we go to this one, turn the mix shader all the way down, it's green. And if we go to this one, turn the mix shader all the way down, it's blue. But you'll notice we're still doing that manually by hand at this point. And so what I'm going to do here is show you how to turn this into a global variable. And so I'm going to add a value node. And the value node allows you to have a number input into another number input. Uh, in this case, it just allows me to change um, which color it is. And I forgot to mention, I have the uh, bloom turned on. I'm just going to turn that off for now, just for clarity's sake. And so again, one is white here, and then zero is that blue color here. And if we want to make this into a global variable, we're just going to take this value and this mix shader and um, press contr control G for Windows users, command G for Mac users, uh, like this. And now we have a node group with two shaders being plugged into it. Um, and you'll notice that this one doesn't have that. We need to go in and manually do that. And so if you go to the add menu, go to the group, you can find your groups that you've created here. Um, in this case, it's just called node group. And so we're just gonna plug that in and give us ourselves another color again. And boom, just like that. Now, if we go into this node group, which I'm going to rename as RGB fade, if we go into this node group, which you can do by pressing tab uh, while having that node group selected, we can change this value, and you'll see that they will change at the same time. Now, this is the very, very basic way to do this, and you um, probably can see that I'm an object mode, there we go. You can probably see that there's things that can be improved here. For example, if we want both of these to fade to the same color, then we don't need to have this second RGB node here. Um, in terms of RGB nodes, that might not seem like it's quite as big of a deal, but if you want to shade between, fade between two shaders that are very different, um, and you don't want to have to recreate that second shader every time so it's exactly the same on all the objects, you can save yourself a lot of time and trouble by just including the second value in the group. And so let me put that back to white and then let me show you how um, to do that. So I'm gonna go here and uh, click on ungroup. And now it's pulled our, uh, our nodes back out of that group. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this one, this one, and this one. So the RGB, the value, and the mix shader. And we're gonna group those. And then we're gonna come back here and here. And now we have color into the group, into the into the output. One input, one output. Um, do the same thing here. That isn't the right one. Did I? Yeah. I forgot to mention, when you change a node group, the name of it will go back to node group, which isn't super helpful. Um, and so here I've got this named as RGB fade 001 because I already have an RGB fade. Um, so I'm just gonna call this RGB fade fixed. Just, again, for convenience sake. And then let's see, let me switch back into solid mode accidentally deleted that cube. That's my bad. And switch this to, I don't know, nice pink. Cool. And then if you go in here and change this value, um, and again, it's doing all of that at once. Now, before I show you how you can keyframe that, because it's pretty simple to do, there's one thing that I want to point out about this method. Um, you may be wondering, why are we using the mix shader and not the mix RGB, especially because if you take the value lower than zero, it gives you colors that aren't either of the two options. And if you take it higher than one, it will eventually start turning on the bloom if you've got that enabled, both of which are not necessarily what we want, especially this here. Um, at negative 0.5, we've got blue and green. 
and what these colors are supposed to be are cyan and purple. So that's uh, that's obviously not ideal. The reason I'm using Mix Shader instead of Mix RGB is because again, um, if you wanted to have a situation where you were combining shaders or fading to transparency, you'd need to do it this way. Um, if you wanted these, for example, to fade to transparent instead of white, you'd need a transparent BSDF, and then you'd want to drag that up to the second node, and then um, you'd need to go into properties for each of your objects and set the blend mode to alpha blend. Alpha blend, cool. Now, if we go back to Shader Editor, open up this up, and change the value, instead of fading to white, they fade to transparent. And that is why we're using the Mix Shader um, to give you that option. However, in order to not have the weird problems with color mixing, essentially all we need to do is to clamp this value to zero or one. Because again, if it goes under zero, it does, um, there we go. So if we go under zero, it does weird things. If we go over zero, it gives you values that are just mathematically incorrect. And so how do we clamp this? It's actually pretty simple. Uh, there's two different ways to do it. My personal favorite way is to take a math node um, and set it to add, set the add value to zero. There we go, not 90. And turn this clamp on. Um, this will do exactly what I just described. It'll set the values to somewhere between zero and one. Anything higher than one is set to one. Anything lower than zero is set to zero. Uh, so let's drag this value up here and take this down here. So now our variable, this value here, is being clamped zero to one. And so if we take it below zero, as you can see, it doesn't affect it. Take it above one, doesn't affect it. Um, and that is what we are looking for here. And you'll notice that adding in those new nodes didn't change this. You can ungroup a node group and make changes, but you can also just make changes directly within the node group, press tab, and it will work exactly the same, which is another huge advantage of doing it this way. Okay, um, one other thing then is how do we animate this? Um, because again, if we want these to be fading, well, they need to be animated. The easiest way to do this is to add a driver to this variable. And so I'm gonna go up here, click on this value, and type in frame divided by 250. Now, as we hit play, you can see that it's slowly fading to white. And if I pause that, you can see that the value right now um, is 0 0.304. We're on frame 76, and so 76 divided by 250 is 0 0.304. The reason I've got it set to frame divide by 250 is because this animation ends at frame 250. And so essentially, at frame zero, the value of this will be zero. And at frame one, it'll be 250 divided by 250, which is one. And so this will go zero to one um, over the duration of the animation. However, the problem with uh, just a linear curve like this is that it doesn't look quite right. You'll notice that the fade is very um, quick at first and it very very becomes uh, less and less strong as it goes. Um, this is a decent workaround and you can set this driver to whatever you want. Um, personally, I'm going to go in and add in a little bit more interesting of a curve. So let's do that. Okay, and now you can see they're fading a little bit more like you would um, expect or want. And then one last thing, I'm going to remove any negative values. Um, and you can do that with the ABS wrapper, and this will take the absolute value of the number, um, and again, that will remove any negative numbers. So if we hit play here, it will fade from zero to one and kind of flash like that. And um, if you can, can change that number however you want it to get whatever effect you want and as you can see it will always always fade the same way and then just to show you that this works with the shaders as well I'm just going to change this um, to transparent and in this case transparent means black um, because the background is black however we can move them in front of each other like this and then you can see that they're fading 
and they're fading at the same rate, which again was exactly what we were uh, looking for here. And so again, this is pretty simple to do. You just have to create a node group um, with the mix shader in it. And ultimately, you could create a node group with just the value. Um, and so we can take this here and call this global variable. Um, and we could go here, mix RGB. Um, come back. There we go. Yeah, just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to have these two RGB. Nope, not you. You, there we go. Okay, so we have two RGBs, purple and blue. Um, looks like that. Blue and purple, right? Now this global variable, we can just plug this in as a value. Um, go in here, change the global variable. It can be zero or one, um, depending on how we want that. And then, if we wanted, we could, you probably already know where this is going, but just make a material. All right, this one's red and purple. I'm gonna make this one green and blue. And now this global variable does exactly the same thing, uh, just fading um, between the two in that way. And so again, you can do it either putting everything in a node group, which is what I prefer, or you can just put the one value by itself in a node group and use that value. And that value, as you can see here, will stay the same across materials. Thanks for watching. That's all I've got for now. Uh, yeah, be on the lookout for more videos. There's a lot of information about Blender that I'm trying to get out there because it's hard to find. Um, so yeah, 